Man, oh man, your boy Lane Kiffin, the Lane Train, whatever you wanna call him, he's back at it. Let me ask you a serious question. With all these old school and hard-nosed college football coaches, is there anybody more likable than Lane Kiffin? I don't think so. I strongly feel like the only people that don't like him are 60 and 70 and 80 year old men. I could be wrong about this, but he just seems like one of the best coaches to play for and overall a cool dude. Now that I think about it, every time I bring up Lane Kiffin, I always talk about how much I like him. Anyways, we're not here to talk about all that nonsense. We're here to talk about what he said. And I gotta be honest, I can't believe he said it. When I first saw it, I thought it was a joke or a troll. Come to find out, it's real. But whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on. We have not one, not two, but three topics to talk about in today's video. Obviously, the main one being Lane Kiffin, the other two involving Ohio State and Georgia. It's gonna be a good video. As always, we're on the road to 200K. Can't get there without your help, so I'd appreciate it. If you do help on the channel, means a lot. If not, that's cool too. And now without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start off with this one first, because I know a ton of you guys haven't even seen this because it doesn't even have a lot of likes, but I happen to stumble across it on Twitter. This person who tweeted this, as far as I could tell, I've never heard of him, but I went to his Twitter and checked it out. I believe he works for ESPN and he's also a fan of Ohio State. I don't know if that's true or not, but he has it in his bio and he's affiliated with ESPN somehow. And this is what he tweeted out and I thought it was a joke. When all is said and done, Ryan Day will be remembered as the greatest coach in sports history. Not just Ohio State football history, not just Big Ten history, not just college football history, not just college sports history, not just American sports history, sports history. I'm going to be 100% transparent. I think that satire, if he's not joking or trolling around, I don't know what to tell you. Like, come on now, that's got to be a joke, right? At least I hope it is. I had to bring that up because number one, Ryan Day's not even a top three football coach as of right now currently. I could rant and rave about that for hours. I'm not going to. I just wanted to share that with you guys. And let me know your opinions down below. I brought that up because it goes hand in hand with what I'm about to talk about next. A couple of days ago, he came out and said that it's going to take upwards to $13 million of NIL money just from local businesses to keep the Buckeyes intact. You got some people freaking out about it and people think it's an absurd amount of money and it is, don't get me wrong, but those players they're what's driving the revenue in the first place i checked it about a day or two ago when i saw that and it was something like ohio state football generated over 200 or 300 million dollars last year so yeah when you hear 13 million dollars you're like dang that's a lot of money but on the grand scheme of things it's nothing well it is something but if those players they're bringing in 250 million dollars yeah, they deserve at least minimum 13 million. And last time I checked, you gotta have the football players to make all this money. Let me know your thoughts on that down below. I'm pretty curious about that. Do you think 13 million that's a lot or it's too small? In my opinion, it's not enough. Moving on to our next topic, Georgia has released potentially some new uniforms and I'll just let you take a look at them for yourself. Before I show you these uniforms real quick, personally I think they're slick and clean looking, but a lot of people disagree with that. The only other uniform Georgia has ever wore that wasn't traditional was their black ones. Occasionally here and there they'd have the blackout game, but normally when they would do that and try it against Alabama, it didn't go so good, so they kind of quit. I'll show you the new concept for the uniforms right here, and I think they are fire. You got the white on white on white, and then you got the red accents. I think it's an icy look. I think it's a modern day type of look. I don't think you could wear these in 1980, but in 2022, yeah, it looks cool. Like I said, there's a lot of disagreements going on. Some people are saying the helmet ruins it, and I don't think so. And then last but not least, I'll show you this picture right here where the five-star recruit, number one player in high school football, Arch Manning, he's wearing the white on white. I like them because I think the red accents on them and the red part on the helmet is going to make everything blend well. Will Georgia ever wear these? Probably not, but maybe they bust them out one, two times next year. I guess we'll have to wait and see on that. But finally, moving on to our main encore, the last and final topic of today's video, we got Lane Kiffin. It's no secret. We all know that many people, I'd say 
75, 80% of college football fans, they want the college football playoff to expand. The reason for that is fairly simple. Everybody is tired of the four-team format because it's always Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, and Georgia. We just want some other teams to have a chance to get into it. Although they may get crushed, it would be exciting and it's something new and different. Nobody's disagreeing that Georgia and Alabama, they weren't the two best teams last year. It's more of, we just need something new, and I can't stress that enough. I think I speak for everybody when I say this. It would be cool to see an 18 format. I think 12's a little too much. Eight, it's right. Because when you do 12 teams, I think it devalues the regular season, and you don't want that to happen. But eight teams, the regular season still holds its true value. With that being said, and I don't expect fans outside the SEC to know this, but the commissioner of the SEC is Greg Sankey. Greg Sankey has gone into the record to say that even he himself, he wants the playoff to expand because it'd be better for college football. I want you to really think about that. The SEC, they shouldn't even want it to expand because it's working out just fine. So when the dang commissioner of the SEC saying, yeah, we got to expand, it tells you a lot. And last year they were doing the voting and they were hoping to come to an agreement on expanding it and they didn't and Greg Sankey, he was pissed off about it. And Mr. Sankey is one of those guys, he doesn't wait around for stuff to happen, he makes it happen. Look at what he did recently. He just got two of the biggest names in college football Oklahoma and Texas and is bringing them to the SEC. There's no debate. The SEC, they were already taken over without Texas and Oklahoma, but now they're on a whole nother level. And I guess that wasn't good enough because now the SEC is having some serious talks about making their own playoff. Yes, that's right. You heard me correctly. The SEC is trying to emulate their own playoff. And this is the important part, so please listen to this. Some people are thinking the SEC is eventually going to get to the point where they just do their own playoff, and the winner of the SEC playoff, they're the overall national champion. Kind of like how UCF, that one year they went undefeated, they was like, oh yeah, even though Alabama won the championship, we don't care, we're the real champions. That's what the SEC could eventually get to. Now, I don't ever think that'll happen, but they're talking about it, so you never know. I mean, if you would have told me three years ago, Texas and Oklahoma was going to join the SEC, I'd have looked at you like you're stupid. Who knows the outcome of that situation, but Lane Kiffin was asked about it, and here's what he had to say. Kiffin said, heck, it's the SEC Invitational anyways, might as well quit wasting everybody's time and just have our teams in it. Now let me ask you a question. I mean, is he wrong about that? I get it's a bold statement, but look at the facts. LSU and Alabama, they played against each other in a championship. Georgia and Alabama, they played against each other in a championship not once, but twice. And now you're adding Oklahoma and Texas. In reality, if you win the SEC, and I've always felt this, you're going to win the championship. And you could also make a legit case and argument that the SEC championship, or just getting through that conference in general, is harder than the actual national championship. I got one more thing to say, and here's how I'm in the video. This isn't something I thought about in the past year or two. I've thought this for the past 10 to 12 years. Take a look at the SEC West. Not even the SEC, just the SEC West division. Just the SEC West alone, you got Alabama, top team, Texas A&M, they're on the rise. Arkansas, they're on the rise. LSU, they won a championship only two or three years ago. And who else? Oh yeah, Ole Miss with Lane Kiffin. Being in that division alone, it's a gauntlet itself. For example, a few years ago, Texas A&M, they went 11-1. Their only loss was to Alabama, and they didn't even make the playoff. Let's compare that to the Pac-12. Let's say USC, they go 11-1, but they win their Pac-12 championship. On the other hand, let's say Ole Miss, Texas A&M, Alabama or Arkansas, they go 11 and 1, but they lost in their division, so they didn't reach their championship and they didn't win the SEC. Obviously, if you took a one loss team out of the SEC West and a one loss Pac 12 champion, that champion, they would make the playoff, no questions asked. But in reality, it shouldn't be that way because the Pac 12 is extremely weak and the SEC to only lose one game in the West division, that's unreal. For example, Ole Miss has to play Alabama, Texas AM, and Arkansas. You would be lucky to go 2-1 and one in those games, and you'd have to play incredible to go 3-0. and oh. But if you go 2-1, and one, that already means you're more than likely not going to make the playoff. Theoretically speaking, if the SEC did do their own type of playoff and whoever won that, they crowned them as a national champion, you can't even argue it. I feel like I was all over the place at the end of this video, but I hope that made sense to you. Yeah, that's going to wrap up this video, though. Let me know your thoughts down below. Bye, 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 bitch!